Welcome to the selfgrowth.com show. My name is David Ricklin, and I'm the founder of selfgrowth.com. Today, we'll be discussing interpersonal trauma. To help us understand this topic, I'm excited to interview Michael Roth. Make sure to listen closely. We're going to be sharing a lot of information today. Before we get started, I just want to take a couple of minutes and share some information about Michael. Michael Roth is an experienced and dedicated holistic wellness specialist, recovery coach, author, and speaker. He's been practicing in Ventura County, California for over 35 years, helping his clients recover from the effects of trauma, both past and present. These effects can range anywhere from stress and burnout to chronic physical symptoms to various addictions. Although he has many titles and certifications, the things that bring him the most fulfillment is being able to move his clients and their families from despair to hope and eventually to healing. Michael is currently certified as a specialist in a wide range of areas, included but not limited to recovery, co a recovery coach, certified trauma recovery coach candidate, neurolinguistic practitioner, hypnotherapist, and transformational life coach. And what I'd like to suggest is everybody just take a minute. I'm going to give you his website. You're going to want to find additional information there after our interview. And I want you to jot this down. It's transforming trauma.net. So it's transforming trauma.net. All right, Michael, welcome to our show. Hi, thanks. Nice to be here. All right, I'm excited. A lot of information I want to cover today. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, to start with, can you share a little bit about your background and how you got into working with, uh, with people that are dealing with trauma? Sure, sure. Well, I'm a trauma survivor myself. So I grew up in a family, you know, I'm in the, I was born in the 50s, where physical hitting was uh, the, the way we were disciplined in my family, yep. uh, which now is looked at as domestic violence and trauma. And, uh, and I also grew up with addiction. I had a family member who uh, had a gambling addiction. When I was uh, 25 years old, I got a phone call one day I was at the gym and my wife at the time said, they found your father uh, unconscious in a park in Forest Hills, New York. Wow. And uh, he was in a coma, brutally beaten. And I'm convinced that it had to do with, uh, you know, his gambling addiction. Right. I believe he got in over his head. So that was for me, very traumatic as well as for my family. Sure. And then my, my mom, as a result of that, she got blamed for it with regard to my father's side of the family. And there was this whole thing about that. That's, that's what an interper part of what an interpersonal trauma is. And uh, she ended up not doing very well initially. And uh, they found that all oh, whatever money and stocks he had were gone. Right. So there was major trauma. And I decided that I'm going to devote the next chapter of my life helping people with trauma because it's rampant. Some people are aware of it, and many are not. Yeah, I see that. Well, first, that's a brutal story and very tough way for anybody to grow up, and it, it's got to have a, a big impact on you. And what I see also is a lot of people deal with trauma in very different ways, and we'll get into it. And some people just ignore it and completely put it aside. Some people will deal with it, but we'll get into some of the, some of the approach and what people are doing. So you mentioned interpersonal trauma. And that's really the topic today. And you started talking a little bit about it. So what exactly is, how do you describe interpersonal trauma? Interpersonal trauma are events between people and, and, and people that are in a relationship with somebody. Like I mentioned, my mom and my grandmother. Right. Um, it could be child abuse, emotional abuse and neglect. Uh, like I said, domestic violence, stalking, historical trauma, elder abuse. Those are types of interpersonal trauma versus developmental trauma, which from an early onset is repetitive trauma, like with an infant, child, or youth. And again, that could include neglect, abandonment, physical abuse or assault, sexual abuse, betrayal. Developmental happens obviously much younger. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is many people who deal with, who are struggling with interpersonal trauma have had developmental trauma. Not all, but many. Right. Yeah, I was gonna mention, it seems like something that there'd be a, a lot of overlap with. Definitely. Uh, so I, I can see that. And you mentioned some of the causes of trauma. 
but I'd like to go into maybe a little bit more depth in some of the causes of, of trauma. And, and I imagine that some people have these experiences and they don't, ex they don't feel trauma. They're not traumatized from it. And other people, it impacts them in a, in a much greater level. So can you step us through that a little bit? So what are, what are the real causes of trauma? And I, I would imagine it's not only the experience, but how you're reacting to the experience. And take well, that's the whole thing. It's, how you, it's mostly how you react. So here's a real life scenario in my office the other day. So somebody comes in and they lost their, they lost their parent. Three months before that, they lost their dog. And, you know, they're not, they feel kind of deadened inside, not alive. And, and they're not what they think functioning on a, on a level. Most, many people with trauma have, a, have what I call a collapsing of traumas where they've had a trauma, it never got dealt with, something else happens that's traumatic, it gets put on that. And then there's this huge stacking until the person has a real hard time right. dealing with life. I mean, mm -hmm. that's an extreme. All right, that makes sense. So I want to delve a little bit more deeply into the impact of trauma because it's it's substantial and it's widespread, and, and trauma could impact you mind psychologically, physically, emotionally. What do you see some of the the main impacts on people of of dealing and whether it's a, a single episode that they're dealing with or the stacking that you're talking about? How, how do you how do you find this manifest itself with people? It could affect uh, with our habits, our outlook on life, uh, leading to addictions and, and, and decision-making. And usually with trauma, if, if there's a, a history of it, the decisions are poor decisions. You know, not, uh, it can take a toll on family life, relationships. It often triggers physical pain and, uh, and illness. So this is the kind of person that goes from doctor to doctor having a myriad of symptoms, you know, they might get better, they might not, and then they go up to the next person. And often it's unexplained. That's very common. And often self-destructive behavior. Mm -hmm. What I have found in working with people with addictions is mostly, mostly what's underneath the addictions are some sort of trauma or traumas. Understandable. All right. What I'd like to spend some time with is really- Very, very common. Two, two things right now. So a lot of people are dealing with trauma, many, many people in their life. So I, I want to look at this from, from two perspectives. Uh, one perspective is what could people do by themselves? I assume there's some things people can do by themselves to deal with the negative effect of trauma. And maybe, you know, awareness, I always like going back to awareness as a starting point for things. So what can people do for themselves in terms of dealing with trauma? And then I know you call yourself a trauma coach and there's a lot of things that, you know, it's nice to get started, but sometimes you, you hit a block when you're, you're just by yourself trying to figure it out. So I, I want to talk to you about how someone like yourself can help and, and work with people. So I want to really cover and spend some time on, on both of those. So let's start and we can spend a little time and talking about things that people can do in general for themselves, uh, dealing with the negative effect of trauma. Well, first off, you have to be aware that there's something going on. So for a lot of people, I mean, there's a denial factor, but I think awareness is critical. So once you become aware, there's a lot of, you could meditate. There's a, a mind-body te uh, technique called emotional freedom technique or tapping. You could uh, do that with regard to the trauma. And then if you do feel like you get stuck, you could look into finding a therapist who specializes in trauma, as well as a trauma recovery coach. Even though there's overlap, you know, there's, a, there's quite a difference. With a, with a therapist, they're able to make diagnoses, mm -hmm. whereas a recovery coach does not make a diagnosis. And therapists delve deeply into the past, whereas recovery coaches, for the most part, start where you are now and help you move through it into the future. That's the big distinction. All right, so the real focus from a coaching perspective is working people through almost on a more practical level of what they can do to, to move through this. Is, yes. is that an approach to, is that a way to describe it? That's very, very good. And then there's other people and like me that has a lot of experience with the mind-body connection and you know, I've, I use techniques like neuro-linguistic programming, 
And uh, I created a technique called somato emotional repatterning, which is a way to uh, down regulate the charge, if you will, of the trauma. If that makes sense. The yep. Do you have any suggestions? One, one of the things you mentioned is as a starting point is awareness. Uh, and I think a, a lot of people have issues in their lives. You, you, you mentioned a bunch of them. They have an addiction or they're making bad decisions all the time. And they're not even aware that they're doing it based on a past trauma. Uh, how can people either by themselves or with somebody, what kind of things do you do to help people really identify what kind of trauma or, or how a trauma impacts them in terms of these ways? So what are some things, really two things, what are some things someone can do by themselves? And then, then how do you work with people to, to help them really? Because in, in my mind, if it's kind of admitting and understanding you have a problem in a step one of the 12 step program or just a general awareness. If you want to do anything, I think this awareness is critical. So where, where do you start with people? So first of all, awareness. So is your life working? Are your relationships working? You know, are, are you creating, you know, the life that you want? And for a lot of people with trauma, they're not, there's a missing. So that's the first step. That's the person who ends up in my in my office or on Zoom. You know, there's something going on that they're they're tired of finding the same woman or the same guy, if you will, and they have no energy. They're just lifeless. They're numb. They notice they're isolating. They don't want to be with people. Uh, or you know, someone came in yesterday. I'd like to you know stop compulsively masturbating to pornography. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And then once they come in, the first question I ask is, why do you want to, you know, give me your why? What is it you want to transform? Because to me, that's the, it, you have to have a big enough why if something's going to get transformed to really motivate you. That's telling me that the, the real focus in terms of someone who's going to look for help is that they have to first identify that there's a problem going on in their life. That's really step one. If they think everything's fine and there's no issues, they're not going to do anything about it. There's no motivation. Correct. Correct. So it's it's people. So first step is really understand, kind of looking yourself right in the right in the mirror and understanding that there are problems. You have problems, and and then sourcing to figure out why why are you having these problems and what you can do about them. Exactly. You know, yesterday, I mean, somebody came in, and she, three children, young children, married, and she is angry all the time. This is coming from her and it's just not working. She knows it and um, you know, so we're working with it and she's already having some really, really good success. A lot of people have chronic anxiety. Now as a recovery coach, I'm not treating anxiety. That's not within my scope of practice, but that's something that gets people in because they realize, man, I've got this, I, I have this feeling that I'm worried and I'm scared, but in reality, there's really nothing for me to be scared about. Right. That's a red flag for the, the some sort of trauma. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. So you talked a little bit about some of the techniques that you use to help people deal with trauma. And I mentioned things like meditation, neurolinguistic programming. Can you talk us a little bit more in depth on on some on any of these techniques, just to to give us a sense of how they work and how you'd work with people on them? Sure, 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 sure. So somato-emotional patterning uses the eyes and the jaw. You know, right now, since the 80s, there's EMDR, there's eye movement integration. There's lots of techniques using the eyes that can actually reduce the charge of the event. I've been doing that since the 80s. So somebody might think of an event, you know, and I walk them through as a facilitator, and then they actually move their eyes in different mm -hmm. directions, and that downregulates down the charge. With, that's somato-emotional repatterning. With NLP, there's techniques called the swish pattern, uh, uh, the gray room. There's, I mean, some really cool techniques that right. within a session or two actually takes the charge away. So the person feels like, wow, I have freedom. I have space yeah. around what happened. Very yeah. powerful. So when I've studied and looked at some of these techniques, it, it amazes me how quickly some of them work versus the concept of going back and kind of reliving and delving into the, the deep emotional patterns. Uh, 
where that can be a, a much more extended type of work that you're doing. Like where, years. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. it can potentially yeah. be years. And what I've seen with some of these is that it's almost miraculous that I, you're learning to change your emotional state in, in essence. And is it, that's exactly I, right. I like the concept of kind of removing the charge because uh, I like that concept because what happens is the way I see it is a past trauma has this kind of this power or this charge over you well, in terms of it. And even if it's not conscious all the time, it's kind of there. And yes. it's, stop, it's stopping you in many ways. So the more you can reduce the impact of this charge, the more likely you'll be able to get on and, and make successful decisions and do things in a, a, a more effective manner. Does that make sense? That's exactly right. And the other thing with trauma is people get triggered. So they could be at work, have a conversation with somebody, with their employee or something, and they'll have this out of proportion response or what I'll call a reaction. Right. And that's another red flag. And then if you go back and, you know, do the, do the work, you find out that something happened three years ago with uh, a parent or a partner, you release it, the charge, and then things are better in the moment. Yeah. That's really, that happens a lot, the triggering. Yeah. What's interesting about the triggering is I've seen in relationships, and I've been in some of these where this happens, is, <laughs> is you get to know each other's triggers. Yeah. And either you're consciously or subconsciously pushing the triggers. <laughs> yes, uh, very good. Yeah. And as and you really, you know, in essence, you really have control over whether you're letting something trigger you or not. But it's not an easy thing to to learn how to control. It's not an easy thing to minimize. It's it's not easy to reduce the charge. And it's there. It's like it's there every time. Every time. So the work is is again. We talked about awareness to be aware, like, wow, I feel myself getting all worked up and in the world of a relationship and he or she said X, why am I reacting? I wonder if there's something else going on, a trigger. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. Now, uh, I know you work with people, you mentioned you work with people in person, you work with people by Zoom and remotely. Uh, can you first, can you give us out your website one more time? Yeah, transformingtrauma.net. All right, transformingtrauma.net. And I know you, I think you have a free ebook and people can contact you. Tell us a little bit about how, who should contact you and who should go to your website? What do you have going on? And what's, what's kind of next steps for folks where that this is resonating with? So if you want more information, you know, again, go to my website and I offer a free ebook. You opt in, give me your email address, not me, but you know, the system. And then you can download the ebook. It has articles that I've written, uh, you'll receive a lot of information, you know, over the months, uh, and then, you know, see if it's a fit. This, if you want more information, or if you actually want to have a conversation with me, you can mm -hmm. email me. Um, I'm here to, to help and support you. All right. So, uh, transforming trauma.net. So make sure to jot that down and tell us a little bit. So you have this ebook and people can just get the ebook. And if someone wants to contact you, schedule an appointment, they can do all that through the website as well. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we've covered a lot of material today. I want to thank you for the insight and the ideas that you've given. Uh, before we wrap up over here, do you have any final words for our audience, a last message you want to leave with people uh, before we wrap up? Yeah, just that you don't have to suffer. All right. There's actually support out there and uh, I encourage you to reach out and uh, and get some support. All right. Michael, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for, uh, for sharing today. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. All right. And I'd like to thank everybody for listening. And I wish everybody great success in all areas of your life. We'll talk to everybody soon. Take care.